Okay, so I just want to go ahead and go through a very quick slide set to discuss classes in C++ and give a little bit more of a brief um, discussion on object-oriented programming and some of its uh, upsides, some of its downsides, because it's a very, very contentious point in a lot of programming circles on whether object-oriented is good or it's bad. And honestly, it's neither. It's it's just another paradigm. None of them are really necessarily good or bad by default. It's simply how we use them, interface with them. So it can be used for good, and it can also be used for very, very bad things. So without further ado, let's go and get started. One sec. Here we are. So classes. So before we begin on classes, let's go ahead and do this. C++ is an object-oriented programming language. So OOP. If you ever see OOP, that is object-oriented. But what does that mean? So if you've ever heard the age-old adage of objects or instances of classes, yeah, that you'll hear that a thousand times. But what does that exactly mean? So let's say we have some block of code. And we store that in the classic header CVP combination for the Example I use is a uh, rectangle, so I'm just going to do rect. So let's say that this this whole block of code, these two classes, are going to construct like two two files. Construct my class, a rectangle. So we have a header file, we have a CPP file. So two pieces of code, one class, good to go. Now I can come into say my main function, a main file. So maybe I have like main.cpp or something like that. And I can do, say, um, rect A, and maybe I say rect B. Right. So this is going to extend all of the attributes, methods, functions, and everything of this class. So it's going to inherit everything of this class in this object A, and then also object B. Now. By default, they're going to have the same constructor in this case. So let's just say I haven't done anything a fancy constructor or anything, uh, just the default constructors. They're going to be identical at the very beginning. But I can alter the attributes of these individually. So now you see that it's very useful for code reuse here. I can use the bits and pieces of the code that construct the class in these objects individually, even though they use the exact same code. So a is going to extend the rectangle class and maybe it has, I think I have a size, so it's going to be a length, height, um, color, so on and so forth, a few different things. So I can set the length, height, and color of rectangle A, and I can set the length, height, and color of rectangle B completely independent of each other even though they use the same code base. So that's what it means when we have objects or instances of classes. So we define our class, all the attributes it's going to have, all the different functions and methods it's going to have, and then we create individual objects that retain those same attributes and functions. We just initialize them, and then you go on about editing them and using them just like you would like a standard variable or something like that. So that's basically what we mean by object oriented programming where we have a lot of states by defining classes, creating objects from those classes, and then there's gonna be a lot of stuff with inheritance and polymorphism and stuff like that, but that gets into a different degree of complexity that I'm not gonna go over right now. That'd be more in a straight up object-oriented defined course to go over the more ins and outs of some things you can and cannot do with C++ based object oriented programming because let's say like the same attributes might carry out of Java, C Sharp, Python, stuff like that. So that would be in a whole different course for now. I'm just gonna cover what we need to know for this course. So without further ado, all right. So classes, several pieces of code that are used to create abstract constructs that have various but similar attributes. As I mentioned previously, we have one here, it's gonna be rectangle, and you saw that it had attributes of say length, height, color, and they're going to have different methods to set those. So the example I use here in text is a house. So we can create a bunch of different houses. So if you go to a suburb or something, you're going to create a lot of different houses. They're all very similar, 
but very, very different in their own way. So here we have a two-story house that's red. So we have a house, story two, color red, this would be the constructor for that. And we have a one-story house that's blue. Then our constructor would be house, story of one, and color blue. So this would be the shared class they extend and then the different attributes they have during construction. Now we can set these later, or we can set these um, during the initialization of the object if we do find a constructor that will take in those attributes. But that's not the here nor there right now. Yeah. What are they for? So, class by nature, very, very portable. It's one of the best things about them. If you define a class in that that common header CVP combination, we can take this and we can insert that into any program that we want as long as we have maybe all libraries accessible, uh, a compiler that might work with it. Obviously there's a few bits and pieces that are going to be beyond the scope of the actual code itself that might come into play. But for the most part, all the code that we write in our header and our CVP should be extended to any program that we run in the future. And you're going to see that very, very commonly in this course with data structures with a class of node. And we'll touch on that in the next slide set, but for now, just know that classes, very portable, allow us to reuse the same pieces of code for similar constructs but we can use them in different ways. But that's all abstract and more applied in different ways. For this, let's just take a look at simple shapes. In this case, we use the humble rectangle because it's very, very simple to work with, but is really good at illustrating how these things work. So here we have a few different bits and pieces to explain what over on the right is. It's just a block of code I have. And essentially this would be what is part of the header file for our rectangle. So we have the actual class rectangle at the beginning, and we have this private and public access. So in private, we have all of our class variables. We have rect length, rect height, rect color, rect color ID, and then we have this long list of colors and uh, 30M, 31M, so on and so forth. It's basically a 2D array that I'm using for ASCII scape values. This is not super important. It's some more complex ASCII stuff. Um, it's used in the class that I'm, the code that I have. You'll see what it's used for, I'll explain it. But for now, you can mostly ignore that. This is the main takeaway here. For the private variables, at least. Here, public, we have a default constructor. With that rectangle, print the parenthesis. We have rect length of zero, rect height of zero, rect color of white, rect color ID of white. So this is what every single rectangle is going to be by default. Then I have no length or height, and it's going to default to white. Then this is commented out. You can ignore that. It's useful whenever it's in a interactive shell, but for, for now it's not. Just ignore that. So void set size is going to take an integer for length and for height. Set color is going to take in a string for color. That is going to be setting it to one of these strings here. That's why it's there for compatibility. And we have a void of get size, void of get color, get area, and then printing the rectangle itself. So that's all that explained. But for now, we want to go over this in two parts. One, the private variables, which are only visible from the class itself and then two, the public methods, which are visible from anywhere. So first thing, let's take a look at the private variables. That's gonna be our rect length, rect height, rect color, rect color ID. It's four different variables. These can only be accessed directly from the class or your object itself. If we use it in the, say, main function, without using an object or anything like that. We cannot deal with it. We cannot adjust it. It is in a private scope. Therefore, if we try to interact with, say, I do, like I did recently, 
I said rect A. If I try in my main file to do A dot rect length equals five, I can't do that. That cannot be done because we are trying to access this variable, this act, like private part of my class here from a different file, from a different scope essentially. And we cannot do that. So that's a way that we can do um, some security aspect. If we want part of our classes that we do not want being modified directly, then we can set that to a private scope and we should be good. Now, yeah, I was having down here color rate, it's a variable available to every instance of the class. It's used for ASCII escape codes. So every single object that gets defined will have this array in it as well. Here we have public. So we have our default constructor. Every rectangle starts like this, length zero, height zero, color white, and also color ID 37M, but again, that's not super critical to know. Just know that it is also part of the default constructor. Also have methods that we can call to interface with the class. Now the set size, the set color here, this is how we are going to adjust our variables. We don't want to adjust them directly from say the main file or a different class or something. We want to call these specific functions because those functions are going to interface with that class in a defined way that we are going to define. So that way there is a more secure aspect that it won't be altered in a way that it shouldn't be altered. Here, rectangle setters are going to be set size. So this is going to be our public functions. So to set the size of the rectangle, we simply take in two integer values, one for rect length, one for rect height, and essentially this is how we do it. So we do void, rectangle set size, int length, int height, rect length equals length, so that's going to be the length value that we pass in. Rect height is going to height, that's going to be the height value that we pass in. And then I also have an output that says rectangle size set to rect length, space, rect height, and then a new line. Just giving the user feedback saying, hey, this is what rectangle or your rectangle has been set to. So could we just make rect length and rect height um, a public variable and adjust it directly from main? Yes, we could. We could do that, but we don't want to do that. Typically, you want your variables to be in private scope and you want to have functions that are in the public scope that will adjust those variables in a specific way that way there's no I guess I was an error or incorrect way of doing it but a lot of the time that we do this is because we want these variables adjusted in a very specific way so giving users the ability to alter them directly it can end up in a very, very precarious situation very quickly. Because uh, age, old, age old adage is if you give users access to something, they will find a way to break it in a way that you didn't know was possible. And that's when we do a lot of code testing and stuff like that. Because if it, if it can be broken, it will be broken. Now, I digress. Here we have set color, a little bit more complicated, but. At the end of the day, all it's doing is it's setting the color and the ASCII escape value. So set color, we pass in a string, like say red or blue here. First, we determine if the color is compatible with our object's color array. If it is, we set the rec color and our color ID accordingly. So essentially, we pass in a string of color. So again, like we said, red or blue, or anything that was in that long array that we had. It has a boolean of compatible color. It's going to be set to false with a color index of zero, just as our default case. And then we're going to loop through that 2D array and determine, hey, is what we passed in inside of that array? If it is, then we set it as a compatible color, break out, set our color index the entire time. And then if it's a compatible color, we will adjust our rec color, rec color ID, and then inform the user that the color has been updated. 
otherwise will update the user that it was not a valid color. Going, we have our getters, and this is how we're going to return data from the class itself. So to return the size, the rect we just make a simple function that prints the rect length and rect height. So here we have get size, see out rect length, space, rect height, and then a new line character. And that's it. So if we want to, we could alter this to return integers as opposed to a void function. So we can actually return, say, hey, we have int get length. And then we could say return rect length. And then we could actually do something with that value. For now, we are just printing the data. We're not actually doing anything mathematically or computationally with it. If we wanted to, we would simply change our void to an int and then return the specific values that we want. That's what we could do if you wanted to extend this um, small class to a more functional class. We could do that very, very easily. And then we have get color, and this is just going to print out the color and color ID. So tango color is going to ask a ASCII escape stuff going on here. It's basically change the terminal text color to whatever the color we have is. So if it's blue, then this slash x1b uh, open bracket rectangle color ID is going to simply change what we have rect color coming out as to say blue or maybe green whatever we have set and then the slash x1b open bracket 31 39m is changing it back to the default color that's all that's doing so it's just some ASCII escape uh, terminal nuance and magic here so you can ignore that for the most part. If you want to, you can look into ASCII escape values and um, colorizing terminal output, stuff like that. It's pretty fun, but I digress. Here though, we're doing something a little bit more interesting with get area. What we're doing here is actually using some math and I mean, it's just multiplying the length and the height together and printing that out, which gives us the area. But again, if we change void to int and we return that instead of cialing it, then we can actually start returning more complicated math. Or we can end up returning the length and the height derived from the area ourselves. Maybe get the perimeter. Maybe if it's a 3D shape, we can get the surface area of it. The, uh, there was a circle and get the radius, the diameter, circumference, etc, etc. So it's just ways that we can extend retrieving data specific to our class by extending the functionality by adding new functions, adding new attributes, a lot of different stuff. So that's what I mean by they are very, very portable. At the same time, they are very flexible. Now, obviously, it's very easy to add way too much to a single class and then it gets really cluttered and you have less spaghetti code and that's where a lot of people say that object-oriented programming is bad because it's done in very inelegant way and it can get out of hand very quickly so just be careful and be cautious when you're actually defining classes and especially if you're dealing with like direct memory access things can get very very ugly very quickly so just just be cautious and the last one here is going to actually print out the re rectangle so utilize three of our class variables um, yeah, we use the height, length, and the color ID. Color ID is what we're using for the ASCII escape value. Um, so you use rect height, rect length as aspects of a kind of nested loop here. So we had a height of three and a length of four. Yeah, I'll say this. Get a loop x times and then start looping y times down and then we'd end up with three rows of hash symbols 
And let's just say that the color is blue because this is blue. So that'd be what my rectangle looks like. All right. And that is it for the slides. I am going to go over the actual code in a separate video. Um, it won't be too complicated, at least I hope it's not going to be too complicated, but I just really wanted to go over some actual slides and break this down more to an English level as opposed to here's some code, I'm going to read you the functions and go through every single aspect and just have code on the screen because that's not always super helpful. If this was a better facet for that, then that's good. And it kind of shows all the different parts of, say, getters, setters, private, public scope, and kind of breaks it down to more of a granular level. Um, I do plan on going over the code because sometimes that helps a lot, seeing all the different aspects of it, because some stuff was left out here, and I'll touch on those aspects that was left out, but I'm not going to go over every single piece in the slides because that would just be a little bit cumbersome and awkward. Um, this is, yeah, 21 minutes, that's be good. But yeah, that's it for classes. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys later.